Good day, my fellow students. Uh, my name is Dr. Osalihu Ismaila. My area of specialization is uh, political economy and development studies. I have a PhD in the area, in the field. The course is POS 411, 400 level uh, student, I suppose. Uh, the course is an uh, interesting one. It, uh, it is a three credit uh, unit uh, course. It's called Organization of Government, or if you like, Forms of uh, uh, Government. The general overview of the lecture. The course examines the concept of third world and dependency generally. That's the topic. Third world and dependency generally. Uh, that's the topic. So the, we are going to uh, uh, examine the concept. What is the third world and what is the dependency? What is the, uh, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean when you said developing world or developed countries? It begins with the historical background of the third world countries and the genesis of the dependency syndrome. You see, uh, you cannot start, at, uh, you cannot properly understand the meaning of what the third world is unless you go back to the genesis, to, the, to what gave birth to the topic itself. Uh, the, the, the third world. Why do we call some countries third world? Why do we call some countries first world? Or why do we call some countries second world? That is uh, the, 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 the idea. Uh, here, you have uh, many scholars that have contributed to uh, the understanding of the uh, concept of third world and dependency. Uh, scholars like Russo, scholars like Amir Samir, scholars like uh, Wallerstein, Scholars like uh, Daniel Ophiong, these are all, uh, and many others, uh, all authors and uh, scholars that have uh, helped to uh, uh, properly uh, bring into bear the meaning of uh, third world and uh, developing countries. The course also is very mechanical use in uh, perpetuating the deepening. Uh, you see, there is this uh, syndrome, dependency syndrome, which has uh, been with us and uh, uh, for some time now, uh, all efforts to get out of the cycle has not been uh, successful. So what is responsible? We have to, the course will discuss the mechanism, the various ways the Western world is using to perpetuate this uh, defense, dependency syndrome. Yes, uh, the, the course will also uh, analyze, critically analyze the effect of dependency, the effect of dependency syndrome on third world countries. Why, what, what has happened that this uh, dependency uh, 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 syndrome has continued to be with us and its impact, negative impact on such matter has continued to be with us in spite of all efforts that third world countries are making to get out of the, uh, uh, of the, of, of the, of the syndrome. Yes. Uh, at the end of the course, the students are expected to discuss, to uh, properly understand the concept of third world and dependency. The concept of development, what is a developing world? You can now di uh, uh, discuss intelligently the meanings of third world, the characteristics, the major characteristics of the third world and dependency, and analyze mechanisms that assist in perpetuating third world and dependency. This is very, very crucial. Uh, you should be able to also discuss the various positions as I mentioned, by the various scholars who have uh, helped to uh, 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 introduce this uh, uh, or, or write very intelligently, copiously for that matter, on this uh, issue, topic of third world dependency. And uh, it gives you a better understanding. The course gives you a better understanding. You will you, be able to now, uh, now uh, sit down and analyze and uh, so that you will be able to position, reposition uh, third world countries within the global economy. And the, this is a method of uh, assessment. The, the, the general this, uh, stu a student, you are supposed to familiarize with yourself with this. Uh, also, yes. Then the textbooks. There are so many textbooks on this, but I'm recommending the third world by Wesley Peter. I'm also recommending aid and the third world, the north-south divide. It gives you an idea about third world, and it give gives you an idea about uh, the forces that uh, 
uh, impacting on, on third world and then imperialism and dependency by Daniel Offen. As we go along, I will get some other textbooks uh, so that we will all be uh, on the same page. Yes. So we are now going to study session one, the third world and its meaning. The meaning of the third world, like I said, we want to really find out what do we mean when we say, when you hear somebody saying third world, or you say third world, what, what is the meaning? What do we mean? Uh, you see, this the classification has been done by the mostly Western scholars. And this started since the uh, Cold War, during the Cold War years, that the fight for supremacy, global supremacy between America and then USSR, uh, Russia. Uh, America was at the head of the, uh, 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 the Western powers, while the, it's basically a capitalist, while USSR then, the former USSR, was uh, purely uh, socialist. Uh, the two pa world powers, superpowers then, we are fighting for global supremacy, each trying to, out to outsmart the other within the framework of their respective ideological underpinnings, the West and the USA, with its capitalist ideas and the USSR leading the Eastern Europe with its socialist inclination. The classification therefore sees the West led by the USA as the first world. Check note, US is seen is, as the leader of the West and they see themselves at the first, they classify themselves as the world world, as the first world. And then they pitted this first world against the Soviet bloc. They see the second bloc, the second, uh, the, the Soviet Union as the second world. That is the USSR, former USSR, before the balkanization of uh, USSR. And then they now lump all other countries, Africa, Asia, Latin America into one third world or developing countries or developing nations. Third world. They now see it as third world. Third, these three countries, three uh, Asia, uh, Africa, and Latin America, they lump them together as developing or third world countries. Incidentally, most of these countries emerged or were emerging from the shackles of colonialism. These third world countries uh, uh, were emerging from uh, shackles of colonialism after the Second World War, that's after 1945. Uh, India, for example, got its independence in 1947, and uh, subsequently Nigeria in 1960. So these are, world, these are countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America that got their independence mostly after the Second World War. So the, it's also important to note that first and second world, that's the USA bloc, the West, and the Eastern bloc by, led by USSR, all fall within the temperate region of the North. While the third world, all the developing nations are in the south of the hemisphere the tropics and subtropics. Also, it is important to note that the basic difference, the fundamental difference between these countries is the issue of industrial uh, development, is the issue of technological development. First and second world are industrially and technologically advanced. They are developed. By contrast, third world or developing countries are less industrially and technologically developed with widespread endemic poverty, high rate of illiteracy, disease, hunger, political instability, and other indices of underdevelopment. Well, let's go back. The first and second world are rich countries, industrially rich, technologically advanced, the level of standard of living very high as compared to the standard of living of the people of the third world or developing countries, 
the standard of living is low. And so, as therefore, that uh, 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 wide uh, di uh, gap uh, in terms of standard of living between the first and second world and third world uh, or developing countries. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, this the difference between the living standard, between the industrial and technological development, between the first and second and third world, has created a dependency uh, 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 condition, whereby the third world or developing nations perpetually continue to depend or see themselves as dependent, in spite of the political independence. They see themselves as dependent of the Western or Eastern world. And uh, this is the problem. The problem is there is that mindset that third world countries will continue and have continued to be dependent on the developed world. Either, either Russia, Eastern Bloc, or, or Western Bloc. America, France, uh, Britain, Germany, Italy, and so on. So, you see, the issue, the second part of the edition will go, will dwell on what do we mean by dependency itself. Dependency is a concept. What brought about this dependency relationship? Also, what brought about the, 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 the disparity in the living standard between the, the first and second world and the third world? This will form part of our uh, uh, very key important lesson of our course. So I believe we have, uh, this is the beginning, this introduction. As we move ahead, we will uh, have some interesting topics that will uh, give do justice to the uh, subject. I thank you very much for listening. There is a question. I don't justify the class. Sorry. Justify the clarification, classification of the world as first, second, and third or developing countries. I've given you reasons, brief, highlight, highlighted reasons on why uh, the world is classified as first, second, or third world or developing country. So please, can you justify the classification? Thank you very much.